The object is not mine. The owner lives in the UK, and she has no idea what it is. They submitted the image and asked what it was on a group, and no one had any guesses that even seemed close. I've worked with images and post-production for about 30 years. When I was young, I ran a booth in an antique and collectible mall, and my friend thought I might be able to help. I used Google Image Search, but I got nothing. The item is 40 pounds, 4 feet long, has cast iron at both ends, and the wood is tapered and seems specific to the purpose. There are markings on the shaft that look very much like the kind of branding marks one sees from American ranches or farms. I keep thinking horse or carousel related, but I have found zero visual evidence. What is this thing? It's an 1800-style wooden forged steel fire department battering ram. This is a very unusual early forcible entry device to assist in fire rescue and sometimes police raids. It must weigh 40 to 50 pounds, and it evidently was made in a blacksmith shop, and it has blacksmith marks on the wooden shaft. This is a one-of-a-kind item. What is this antique bench with a bowl and handle? My in-laws inherited this bench, and we can't figure out why this bowl was carved out and a handle was added. Possibly it was reclaimed from something else, or maybe an ashtray. The bench weighs about 80 pounds, and the hardware for the handle seems to match the banding around the wood. Any ideas? It's a World War II Liberty Ship hatch cover, converted to a coffee table. The patent for these covers was filed by Harry Cox in 1931. The hatch lies on the deck of a ship, and crew members walk on it when they need to get below deck, so a protruding handle would be a tripping hazard. My dad bought a ship hatch in New Jersey in the early 70s and built a table base for it. My folks hauled it everywhere they lived, and it's still the main coffee table in my mom's house. Dad died last summer. What is this flat wooden board on legs with seemingly no purpose? About 60 centimeters tall, it is flat on one side and has decoration on the other. There's nowhere to add a mirror or picture, and no writing or anything on it. I bought it from a charity shop because it was only five pounds and I was curious. I'm currently using it to put my towels to dry, but I want to know if it's useful for anything else. Thank you in advance. It's a Victorian wooden fireplace screen with their purpose being to shield occupants of a room from the heat of the flames of a fire. They were in use from the Middle Ages until the demise of the open fire as the main form of heating during the 20th century. What is this mystery machinery part? Approximately one meter tall, with a metal frame and glass dome, possibly a light. This was in a bric-a-brac shop near me. It was dug up in a farmer's field in Derbyshire, England, if that may be relevant. Any ideas? It's an airborne fluxgate magnetometer that dates from World War II when it was flown in an Anson aircraft for submarine detection. After World War II, the magnetometer was acquired by the Department of Mines and Technical Surveys to be used for aeromagnetic surveys. The first such surveys took place in 1949, with the magnetometer mounted in a Kanzo aircraft. The surveys were flown at extremely low altitudes of 150 meters, much to the annoyance of farmers who complained that the noise upset their poultry and livestock, and it looks like there were around 30 plane crashes around the Derbyshire area. I was cleaning out the garage and found this box from the previous owner, and I have no idea what it is. Just a wooden box with some electronics inside, but no plug for a wall, just a loose wire. It says Crosley, the front has four dials, and it has five light bulbs inside which is interesting. Any ideas? It's a 1920s Crosley tube radio. It's a five tube tuned radio frequency battery powered broadcast receiver. It has two stages of radio frequency amplification and two stages of audio frequency amplification. It was sold for $38 in the late 1920s. What is this wooden cabinet about 44.5 inches long and six inches deep? It has two glass doors with 16 holders each. There are 12 ivory buttons on top with slots behind that feed into the drop-down tray. The holders are a good fit for communion cups or shot glasses. 
The drop-down tray has evidence that there was a keyed locking mechanism for it. The ivory buttons do not have any text, but some have a black circle on them. The rest appear to have rubbed off. What is this cabinet for? It's the bottom part of a Victorian billiards, snooker, and life pool scoring cabinet, made by Thurston and Company in London, circa 1880. Life pool was played for money with the winner taking all, hence the coin well with this scoreboard. The stake money was put into the relevant slots, with the coin being behind glass and unobtainable. Once the game was completed, the winner took their money by unlocking the draw. Once opened, the coins fell into the draw and could then be removed. Can anyone tell me anything about this brass ornament? It's hollow, 13 centimeters tall, 500 grams, and engraved. This has been in the family for decades, and I would like to find out more about it if possible. We are based in the UK, but my parents picked up stuff from jumble sales, so it could have come from anywhere. Where and when do you think this was made, and what bird does it represent? It's a bronze candle stand in the shape of an owl from the Han Dynasty, 206 BC to 220 AD, but a reproduction from the 18th to the 19th century. The bird is standing on its two legs with its long flat tail, balancing the weight of the sculpture in the back. What is this clear glazed white ceramic ball with brown lines found wrapped in fabric and tape? I found it wedged in between rocks while tide pooling on the Northern California coastline near Redwoods National Park. It's about the size of a softball and weighs maybe five pounds. I was able to find similar decorative items sold online, but none that seemed solid like this. The smudges in the line work are set under a clear coating and cannot be smudged more. Any ideas? It's a Victorian Scottish carpet ball from circa 1860. Carpet bowling was an indoor game popular in Scotland and later England. It was played indoors as a parlor game using heavy ceramic balls known in Scotland as piggies. The game was extremely popular between 1860 and 1880, and almost every home had a set of piggies. It was a popular pastime and was encouraged by the churches to prevent young men from partaking in alcohol and mischief, and local schoolrooms were often permitted to be used as bowling halls. What is this small, possibly brass bell with a base and a tiny tweezer? The top has a hanging thing, so it acts like a bell. It was found in my grandma's curio cabinet after she passed, and none of her children have any idea what it is or where it came from. The plastic bowl does not come out, and no markings on it. Any ideas? Please let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.